Do you remember when I built the Mobius strip tank, the tank with a twist in the track? A Mobius strip or loop is a one-sided object, and we can easily demonstrate the principle by getting a strip of paper, putting one twist in it and joining the ends together. This means that we essentially have one continuous side, so if we follow it around we travel over what would have been both sides of the strip when it was flat and return to where we started. The original tank I built has tracks like this, because it was suggested in the comments of another video, but it was hard to think of good reasons why it needs to exist. The only thing I could come up with at the time was that we could have one whole length of track with one type of driving surface, and one whole length of track with another. Although it's hard to use them when you want, because it's all one side of the track going round. After I built this I realised that where the track twists there's a section in the middle where the track is vertical, and this would allow it to bend the other way at this position. I previously built a bendy tank inspired by sushi restaurant conveyor belts, but it was hard to keep the track on its sprockets. So this time I'm going to build a bendy twisty tank that uses the twist as a bend point. There are a few design challenges though. We need enough space for the track to twist in the middle, but also some length of track section touching the ground at each end to make it worth having tracks at all. We need to make sure that the edge of the track in the middle at the bottom touches the ground so that it doesn't fall onto its corner when it bends, but also that the track is high enough that it clears the sprocket and we can have another roller to support it. There are a number of other interesting design features and we'll talk about those as we build it. This project's actually massive so I've got loads and loads of track links to print, in excess of 80 in fact, so I'm doing these on multiple printers at the same time to get them all done in time. There are also some TPU sections, so the rollers we looked at, there's around 6 of those and I'm printing those on 2 printers as well, in some high density TPU. Lots of the main parts of this project are too big to fit on the print bed, so I'm using the Lolzbot Taz long bed which has a bed twice as long as all the other printers, and I'm also using a 1.2mm nozzle to get these parts done super quick. So just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lolzbot 3D Printers for supporting my channel with 3D printers. It really helps get the projects done in time when I've got so many printers to print on in parallel. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, you can now get 10% off at 3dfuel.com with my special code and link and I'll get a small commission. There are quite a few big chunky parts for this project, in fact there's too many to fit on the table this time. But that doesn't include the 80 track links that I need to put together for this one, so I'm going to start by assembling some of those. The track links are really similar to the last Mobius tank, the sprocket spacing is still exactly the same, but I've just made them longer so they touch the ground in the corner. I'm using 3mm stainless steel rod to make all the links, and these have already been cut and deburred. Here's several of the links together, so of course they bend in the normal way you'd expect, but they can also twist, which is really important to get that twist in the track, in fact in two places for this project. And if we put together more than 10, each one twists 18 degrees, so we should get our 180. Here's a whole bunch of the thing together, but not all of it. It doesn't look like much on the table, but if I spread it out, it's actually really, 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 really long. That still isn't enough track links for the whole project, so these things always turn out bigger than you expect. My sprockets are made in exactly the same way as last time, which is some sprocket ends which are screwed onto some cylinder parts, with the thing on one end so I can put a pulley on. Thanks to Simply Bearings for the bearings for this project, check out simplybearings.co.uk. And of course those recesses on both ends of my sprockets are for those bearings to fit in so it all runs nice and smoothly. Two of those are going to be driven, so I've got these pulley rings which I'm just going to fit onto them. Here are those TPU parts I was printing, this is basically a tyre for a roller with a rigid core. So the core has a lump on it and there's a recess in the tyre so that I can push it in and it locks into place. It's quite high density TPU but eventually I can push it in, and of course each of those rollers has a bearing on each end so it runs nice and smoothly. Here are a couple of those parts printed on the long bed with the 1.2mm nozzle, so you can see those massive extrusions on there. They print quite quick and they're really strong and chunky. There are a pair of those on each end which of course go opposite each other. I made these separate orange tabs and those screw onto the missing corner of those parts, and that means I can easily replace that part and move the holes around for the sprockets to adjust the track tension without reprinting the whole thing. There are some grey spacer blocks in the middle and also some extra orange blocks on the outside. I'm going to be putting studding right through here to run my sprockets on and that's going to get bolted to each side as well, so the whole thing should be super rigid with those spacer blocks screwed on and the studding bolted too. With those blocks screwed in each side and the studding done up to the actual plastic each side, so there's a nut each side actually gripping the plastic on each side, that's feeling pretty substantial, so I've got all my sprockets in on their bearings, 
and I didn't forget to put the belt on, the one that's got the pulley on, so we can drive this. I think we're gonna have a motor in each side. So as well as one of these, I've actually got two of these that are symmetrical. There's a big hinge thing in the middle and we need to put those other rollers in, but this thing's gonna work out pretty long. It's about a meter and a half long in the end. And we need some more massive chunks of plastic for this, again on the long bed with that 1.2 millimeter nozzle. Yep, these are some more parts that fill the table completely. Look at those massive extrusions. These parts really are tough and they didn't take too long to make. These big long plates are screwed onto the sides there and these are basically going to be the parts that hold those TPU rollers which fit at various places. There's actually three on each side but I'm probably going to leave the top one off because I don't think we really need it. Those rollers there suspend the tracks at the top and the bottom and there's also one higher up if we want it which will squish that track but I don't think we're going to need it. I've got both hinge pieces installed there so basically it's going to sit like that with a pivot in the middle and this thing really is massive it's around a meter and a half long. This is the pivot point but we need some rollers which we're going to wrap the track around. Here they are however what we need to do is pivot the track right in the middle so we've got these extra floating sections which are actually going to hold those rollers. So those fit independently of the two sides, there's one at the top and one in the middle there, and these rotate independently. So that means that we can put the rollers either side and we still get a pivot point in between the rollers, which is in the middle where the whole thing folds. Those little rollers are fitted in the middle here and the track of course bends round, goes through the middle of them and the middle is where the centre rotation point is for the whole thing. Obviously if it's just one roller in the middle the track could only go one side, that would only work when it bends one way and that's why there's two rollers fitted onto these independently rotating things. So now we've got to get that track and try and feed it through and link it up and see if the whole thing even runs. This whole thing is already quite heavy even though it's plastic and also this track is already massive as well, so trying to feed this through is not going to be any fun at all, I don't think. So I've managed to feed it all the way round and get those twists in there and everything through the rollers but as predicted it isn't long enough at all so it doesn't even reach round the other end there so we need to make some more links. But before we carry on with that, it's time for a quick ad from the video sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay is a one-stop shop for PCB manufacturing, assembly, and other types of manufacturing services, including contract manufacturing, all under the same roof. PCBWay manufactures all sorts of boards, including standard fiberglass boards, but also aluminium PCBs, flexible PCBs, and rigid flex PCBs, which are part rigid and part flexible. PCBWay also provides CNC services including online CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and injection moulding. Their CNC machine services include a wide range of materials including aluminium, stainless steel and various plastics. PCBWay's 3D printing services include SLS, SLA, DLP, FDM and more in a variety of materials. Check out the PCBWay website to browse through a variety of finishes and get a quote. Check out the PCBWay Shared Projects section. This is a community of user-submitted projects with PCB schematics and parts listings. It's an open source platform for every maker to share their designs and all e-lovers can quickly get the files. They also have a module store which has all sorts of items for sale such as Arduino boards, toolkits, robot parts and kits and sensor modules. Find out more now at PCBWay.com and I'll put that link in the video description. So I made a load more track links um, to finish this off. So we've got over 80 now. So it's all together. It does run okay. And if I bend it, it kind of runs okay. It's a bit difficult to push along in general. And I think the track's getting stuck in this middle section. So basically there's quite a lot of uh, slack on the top here. And the track is dragging on that section and getting caught on that bit where the hinge is. So I think I can't take out a track link, it's not quite enough to take out a whole link. But I've got these orange tabs on the end so that I can move the sort of hole that holds the sprocket. And move that out on each end and just pull that track a bit tighter to give us some more tension. If I thought about this I'd have had those rollers a bit higher. So it actually holds the track up higher and made the whole thing taller. But it's a bit late now. 
And you'll notice what I've done here is at the bottom, the track twists and twists back. So then basically it comes back where it was, but this one twists and keeps twisting and twists over. So we still get that Mobius strip effect where we're gonna run on one side of the whole track and then it gets twisted over and we run on it again. So this twists it over and this twists and twists back so it doesn't twist it over. Just made another one of those and that's got the hole 10 millimeters further out and that just pulls the track a little bit tighter. So now, yeah, we've got much more tension there. It's not all floppy and all over the place. Still might drag in the middle, but we'll see how it goes. So let's see how it runs. Well, actually feels really bad. It runs for a bit. If I run it backwards and forwards a bit, I can kind of get through the jam, but it seems to be jamming quite a bit. I don't think it's in this middle section. It seems to be somewhere. It feels like the sprocket's on the end. Cool. These are the same sprockets and the same tracks, remember, from the last tank, but the difference is now this track is much longer, which means that it can move here, and I think that's causing it to sort of ride up on the sprockets, and then the sprockets don't fit in the gaps because they've got these square sections on. I've designed these alternative sprockets, which you'll notice have these sort of more pointy profiles rather than the square profile, and I've made those in two halves, so I don't need to deal with the awkward overhangs. So yeah, we need to replace every sprocket, which is six of them with each a sprocket on each end, basically. And those are the two halves, so they were printed with no overhangs flat on the bed. I fitted those onto the sprocket there, and you can see the comparison of that profile instead of square is nice and pointy. So hopefully that should fit in the track much better now. And yeah, I've replaced all six of those, and that's three on each edge. So you can see that fits into the holes on those track links. Everything's reassembled with those new sprockets, so let's give it a push and see how it works. Well, it feels much better immediately. It seems to run really, really well. Even if I bend it and steer, everything's running really smoothly. So that's pretty good. I don't know if I really needed to tension the track up, but it certainly stops it dragging in the middle so much, so I'm going to leave it as it is. But for now, I'm really happy with the way this runs, considering the complicated twists and turns the track has to make. It must be time for some motors. I'm using these worm gear motors again, which are 24 volt, they're pretty powerful, and there's a big pulley on there to drive the wheel. So there's one of those fitted in each side, just driving one of those sprockets, the one in the very far corner on each side. And I've just sized those plates to hold them to get the belt tension exactly right. Yeah, it's pretty massive. Well, it seems to run okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that's working. At least the motors have got enough power to turn it, and it seems to be running pretty freely. So it's time for some steering. I'm using these linear actuators. I've actually got two of them, one for each side. They don't move that quick. They're 12 volts, but I'm probably just going to run them on 24 volts like the other motors. Won't be using them very much, so hopefully they won't overheat. This is pretty big and I haven't got much space, so it's pretty awkward to walk around, but essentially we've got one actuator on one side, which pushes from that floating middle section to one of the sides. And if we go around the other side, of course, the other actuator pushes from that floating middle section to the other side. So they're both pushing against each other to make it bend. The electronics are an Arduino Mega and two motor drivers. I'm just using one motor driver to drive both the drive motors and the other one to drive both those actuators, because they both do the same thing anyway. And my controller, as usual, is my universal remote I use for everything, which is a DSM remote. So let's go for a drive. I'm actually really happy with how well this is running. You can see that track going through its twist twice. I can steer, so with these running on 24 volts, they go pretty quick. Obviously, the actuators are wired one in reverse, so when one pushes, one pulls, and that causes the thing to bend one way or the other. So I can pretty easily do a three-point turn. The turning circle's not great, but I can pretty much do what I want without too much trouble, without hitting the door or any other obstacles, even in my small kitchen. It's actually pretty satisfying seeing that track go all the way around there and twisting in the middle and everything running fine, and you can see those TPU rollers turning. So I'm pretty happy of how this has turned out. I wasn't really sure if it was going to be an absolute nightmare, but it seems to be running okay. Even with the track bent as tight as it goes, you can see that quite satisfying look of those twisted tracks going through the middle. So I'm really, really happy of how this has turned out.
It is of course more than powerful enough to dry steer, those tracks are smooth so nothing really to grip there and the floor is smooth. So yeah, I can pretty much do what I want if I want to steer on the spot and drive off in a different direction. But what about on uneven terrain? That's what tanks are for really, isn't it? Well, that's quite a different story. You can see the thing rocking side to side quite badly here, just driving on the grass. The ground's not that lumpy. I guess there are some lumps and bumps in it and tufts of grass and leaves and that sort of thing. You can see it rocking wildly like a boat. And I think that's probably because those tracks are flexible, so there's nothing to actually hold it upright. Of course, they swivel all the way round, which is a bit of a problem. What I probably should have done is had some really wide dolly wheels on the sides there at the bottom to actually hold the track and brace it down on each side. But anyway, there we go. I'm pretty happy the mechanism works otherwise. I thought driving with it bent would be helpful because it's propped up in the corner and then it wouldn't rock so much. But actually, all that happens is the belt skip until I lift that corner off the ground. And I think what's happening is that that belt's getting stuck where it twists and the track tries to twist and untwist in the bottom at the middle and that's getting stuck on the grass um, as well as probably some lumps tipping it over in that direction even more. So that's a real problem and I think we can't really do much about this. Obviously on a smooth surface we don't have the issue because it doesn't get stuck in the grass.